What's going on guys? In this video, we're gonna talk about how to shut down the running game or how to hold runners as a middle infielder. I'm Coach Matt in YougoProBaseball.com. I'm here with Nick Shaw, former Brewers middle infielder and creator of the Baseball Box. It's a monthly subscription box where you get all kinds of baseball goodies delivered right to your doorstep. Uh, you can check it out at TheBaseballBox.com. I'll leave the link down below in the description. But let's get into the video. Tell us, what was your strategy in holding base runners as a middle infielder when you were playing in the Brewers organization? So this all started now in high school college. I didn't really know what I was doing. I would kind of just pat my gloves sometimes and hope they would go back. And then I would retreat to my position kind of randomly. Now it wasn't until I got to the Brewers where I truly learned how an infielder can shut down the running game. I always thought it was the pitcher's job or the catcher. I'll just let them do it until I saw a guy take third base three times in one game. Then I knew I was doing something wrong. Now, it all starts with communication. Communication between you as a middle infielder, whether you're a shortstop or a second baseman, and your pitcher. And the communication is, again, you can have plays, but I'm not gonna get into inside moves and timing plays right now. I'm just strictly talking about communication on when the pitcher is going to deliver the baseball. Now, that should be, you're giving the, the pitcher permission to deliver the baseball. What I mean by that is, as soon as I retreat to my position, I am telling him it is okay to deliver the baseball and this guy is not gonna steal. And if he does steal, we're gonna have a pretty darn good chance of throwing him out. Now, it starts with reading a base runner, right? To me, I always had a line, an imaginary line drawn in the dirt, where if the base runner got to that line, Bells are going off and it's time to get him closer to the bag or even put, put a pick play on. Now, there's my base runner. I want it to be in one position on the field. You hear a lot of coaches saying, work the runner, work the runner, and here's what you end up seeing. You see a middle infielder doing this. You see a middle infielder doing that. Now, what does that do as a middle infielder? That tires me out. Now, what happens if I'm working in and out and the ball is hit? Now I'm running my suicides here, holding the runner on, and I have to run and grab the ball. So we're in one stationary position when I'm holding the runner. Now, my cue to the pitcher is, again, I don't have a timing play on, I don't have an inside move on. I am strictly daylight. So if my runner extends, go ahead and extend, John, and the pitcher sees me inside the runner and the base, that is his cue that a daylight is coming. Okay, he knows what to expect. It's not gonna catch him off guard, all right? It's not a let me hide behind the runner and all of a sudden surprise my pitcher. Now that can turn into wild throws, bad footwork there, or even box, okay? So you're in one stationary position in striking distance, and if the runner extends and the pitcher sees me inside the runner in the bag, I am flashing daylight in a strong manner and sprinting to the bag, okay? Now on the other side of that, if the runner, if I am in my stationary position and the runner is flat footed with no momentum, standing right there, I am now releasing to my position, telling the pitcher it is okay to deliver the ball. Now it is about reading the feet. If the feet are still moving, I am staying in my stationary position. I am staying in my stationary position, staying there, staying there. And you see how a lot of runners keep extending, keep extending. Eventually, it's gonna to get to the point where I'm inside and it's daylight time. Now, if he keeps moving his feet and stays in the same spot, stays in the same spot, now I can retreat to my position, okay? But the key is not to let the runner's feet keep moving, keep moving towards third base and me just simply retreat back to my position. Last thing I got on this. Now, this is not a glamorous thing to do, guys. It's not fun holding runners, but when you get good at it, you start paying attention to the steal numbers and what percentage my catcher is throwing guys out at third and how little runners are trying to steal third. And if you take some pride in doing this, it's gonna help your team out tremendously, all right? So let's get away with work the runner, back and forth, work the runner, and let's work smarter by reading the base runner that is right in front of us and limit him stealing third base. Now, what about um, receiving the ball, the throw from the pitcher at uh, second base, how does that all work? So from our striking point, where I'm at, where I'm set up to hold this runner, 
I want to be in a good position where if, when I sprint in flash daylight, I can get to a straddle position on time. Now, if I'm too far away from the bag, it's going to lead to this. I'm sprinting, he's a little quicker than me, and I'm late to the bag, catching the ball behind the baseline. Now, what that leads to is this runner is going to come across. A lot of times it'll hit the base runner and shoot into the outfield, leading to this guy getting to third base. So, being in the right position, close enough striking distance where I can sprint, get to a straddle, catch, and make a tag. One quick tip from a pitching perspective uh, with a runner on second base, you have to mix your looks. I see too many pitchers, they'll look at the guy at second, look at home, and pitch. You do that once or twice, that their base coach is gonna know, and this guy could pretty much walk into third base. Once you look the first time, look back, that runner's taking off. So make sure you're mixing up your looks. No looks, one look, two look, crazy looks, whatever it is, mix it up every single pitch. That's gonna keep the base runner uh, off balance and, and solid in the ground, heavy legs. It's gonna make it harder to steal third base. Now, what about um, the communication between the shortstop and the second baseman so you know who's covering the base? Are both guys trying to work the runner or is one guy trying to do it? And if it's only one guy, how do you communicate that? So there should only be one guy holding the runner. Unless you have a special play where some guy crashes the base, gets back to his position, and then it's a flash play, right? That's a design play. That's totally different. But on a routine runner, there should be one guy holding the runner, all right? One guy's holding his position, covering ground, and the other guy is holding the runner. To me, as a shortstop, I liked holding everybody. Unless it was a big right-handed pull hitter where I had to be in the hole, I liked holding everybody because from my spot, I could easily get back to my position each time. So it wasn't a matter of me being out of position. It should be one guy. Typically, you do right-handed hitter, the second baseman will hold, left-handed hitter, shortstop will hold. It's all preference of the coach and the middle infielders themselves. Uh, the communication for that between you two is a closed mouth, meaning me, I have the coverage, or an open mouth, you. So the other position player, middle infielder, will have the coverage on the uh, holding the run. And I saw, saw when you demonstrated to the camera, you put your glove here, obviously you're doing that to block it from everyone else seeing in the infield and you're just communicating to your other teammate, right? So that's how you guys uh, should hold the runners as middle infielders. And obviously I gave you a few tips to your pitchers as well. So take that into consideration. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check out thebaseballbox.com. I'll leave the link down below where you can check that out. And uh, Nick and I are shooting a bunch of videos today. He shot a bunch of videos with me before. I'll link some of the best videos we've done together down below. So check those out. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.